So we saw here that depending on your particular setup, this was either uh, very hard or not so hard. Um, so we're going to do we're going to need to do something like this for Google in a moment. But do you see the concept? We go to the search engine directly and we say, "Hey, here's our website. Let me verify it with you." If I were to properly verify, this is a fake site, so I don't have I don't I can't show it to you exactly. But if I were to properly <coughs> set it up, then here then I would get a screen full of data, and next week after we've had this set up for at least a week, we possibly have some data to look at. This starts to gather the data from the moment you set it up. It's not really going to go back in time and told you what happened to your site a week ago if I barely set it up now. So that's why this is one of the first things I would set up for a client, these webmaster tools, as soon as possible. Even if the site is still kind of in work in progress, I don't know what traffic might be coming to the site, and I don't want to forget to do this. So the longer, the sooner I have these webmaster tool, webmaster tools set up, the better. And hopefully by next week we'll have some data to look at and I'll break it down what it all means and what we did here. What I want to do then is shift gears and do something similar over at Google because I want to set up the webmaster tools for Bing and Google. So before I leave Bing for the moment, any questions at this point? My handout is divided into the Bing section and the Google section. So on the Google section, there is a link there, again, to the manual, all the do's and don'ts, all the best practices of Google. You can, you know, print it out and curl up by the fireplace and read it on your own, uh, but this is where you would get all the information. We need to verify a site just like we did with Bing. We'll see how that goes in a moment. We need a site map for Google just like Bing. So if I was able to set this up properly on Bing, it's going to be pretty easy on Google. However, with Google, we have to do two things. We have to set up the Google Search Console, which is very similar to what we just did on Bing. And then we have to set up Google Analytics, which is a different thing that we need to set up. And I've been using this stuff for years, and I've been teaching it, and I'm always telling people, well, eventually, probably Google will merge the two because both of these give you different pieces of data, and you have to set them up differently. And I kept telling students, they're probably going to merge it eventually. It looks like they've done the complete opposite, because now there's like four more versions of this thing that I have to learn as well. And so they seem to have separated these out into more features. For us, what we will care about are the webmaster, the search console, and the analytics. And if we do this, if my company were to do this for a client, once a month we would log into all three of these links and check the stats. And I'll talk about the stats next week when we have hopefully some stats to talk about and what do they mean. But we need to set them up first. So you can click or you can go to the address google.com slash webmasters. Go to your web browser or click the link google.com slash webmasters. This is the search console. For like 10 years it was called Webmaster Tools. Now they call it Search Console, but the address is still Webmasters. Search Console. This is going to tell you, well, this is the spot where you check what does your website look like on a Google search. Set this up so that we can check if there's problems on your site. Use this to check on keywords. All of this useful stuff. And so, very similar to Bing, what I would need to do is either to sign in or sign up. At the top right corner, if you click sign in, then it'll say, okay, if you have a Gmail account, you can sign in. If I don't have a Gmail, I have create an account. Again, it's up to you to decide what to do here. If you have a personal account of Gmail, you can use it. If you've got a business Gmail, you can use it. Doesn't matter. Because as we'll see later, with Bing as well, I can create this with my personal Gmail and then give other people access to the data with their own login information. I don't give them my Gmail, they log in with their own. We'll see how to add more managers later. So you decide. Maybe you don't have any Gmail address. Fine. You can, have, you can go through the process of creating one. So at this point, either sign in or sign up. 
Take a moment to sign in, and then I'll show you what to do on the next screen. So if this is the very first time you set it up, it's going to have a little video of a website holding a wrench. And it's a video that you can watch at your leisure that says, what's so good about Google Search Console? And right next to it, there's going to be a, a little box for you to add your website. So in that box, you're going to put in your, your website, the same website that you did on Bing. Now before, you type the address. Let me make a note here on our notes regarding webmaster tools. Google Search Console cares about the subdomain and protocol. Bing does not. What this means is um, Bing, I mean Google, will care when it's asking you to put in your web address. It'll treat victor.com and www.victors.com as two different sites. That's a subdomain, technically, www. So we're going to need to do both, either or first. That's the subdomain. Now, it also cares about the protocol. So if you have <coughs> also HTTPS, victor.com, and HTTPS, www, victors.com, I'm going to need to submit to Google four versions of my site because some people might visit the site with the www and without the www and Google keeps track of both data and shows you both data and if you've got the secure version of the site it'll keep track of that the way you get the secure version is you have that little lock on your website if you don't have that lock on your website you don't have HTTPS and you don't really get that lock for free that's an extra add-on that you pay for usually at GoDaddy, Bluehost, one and one whatever. It's extra security. It's known as SSL. SSL, secure certificate, not free. Everyone gets the free version, the non-HTTPS version. Everyone gets the plain old HTTP version. Uh, but if you want the secure version, the S is for security, that lock, you have to pay for it. If you uh, don't remember paying an extra like $80 for that, you probably don't have it. You will need to check that with your provider at some point. Can you just put a comma if you want to put the two sites? In no, I need to show you. And oh. you need to do both of them individually. So either or, we need to do them both. I'm going to do the non-WW version first and go through the whole process. When that one's done, then I need to do the whole process again with the WW version. It'd be nice to do the comma. That's a good idea, but they, they, didn't, they didn't have that idea. Bing does not care about any of that. It doesn't care about the protocol and the WW, so we did it one time with Bing, we're done. With Google, we need to do it at least two times, maybe up to four times, if you've got the secure version. And the way we'll do it is, 
Either or, but I'm going to say let's do the plain old non-secure, non-WW version first. When we're done with this version, then we'll add another property, which will be the WWW version. So I'm putting in HTTP, no WW, add. The screen's going to be a little bit different here, but very similar to Bing. Bing, we had three options. Upload a file to verify, edit the meta tag to verify, or that CNAME thing which I said don't even bother. Google has the same. Now, it may rearrange it in different ways depending on what you have. Mine is suggesting upload a file as the recommended. Well, if, if you didn't do that method for Bing, don't do it here. It might, you might have to look under alternate methods. Under alternate methods, here's where I see the HTML tag. That's the way I did it on Bing. That's the way I'll also do it on Google. You might have mixed it up. I see sometimes people see directly, use the HTML method, and then your upload method is under alternate. What I also see is that sometimes it sees, oh, you're on GoDaddy, try this method. Again, don't even try that method. Try the method of either an upload or an HTML tag. Anything else like the domain provider, again, don't even try that. If you've got already Google Analytics already set up, you can use it to sort of vouch for you here on Search Console. If you're coming to this class, you probably don't have analytics set up. We're going to do it together. So you may or may not be able to do this one unless you know you've got analytics. Same thing with Tag Manager. If you know you've got Tag Manager set up, you could use this to then verify Search Console. If you don't know if you've got those two, it doesn't hurt to select HTML method or upload method. So again here, we might need to pause for a much shorter time for you then you to do either of those two methods. Do those two methods, one of those two, and then click Verify. We'll pause here if anyone needs any help doing that method. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, so um, hopefully then, whatever you did then for Bing, it's going to be the same concept in Google once you then verify. Uh, that should take you back to the main screen. Mine's not verified because it's fake. But once I verified the non-WW version, I would go back to my main screen and, and have the button again to add another property. Then I would add the... Um, I would then add the WW version. I would add you know, www.com, whatever. I would add the WW version of my site. I do see two different bits of data because um, Google sees two traffic sources, the WW version and the non-W. Um, so I would need to verify both. I would click continue, and then I would just do the same verification method. Click verify, and I'd have the two versions of the site. I can't show that exactly because it's a testing site. And then once we've set that up, we're going to we're going to leave that. We're going to leave it as is. And next week we have one more to look at. But the next week we would. Uh, look at our data and I'll explain what is this data, what, what does it mean, and what do we do with it. Because all of this effort that we do regarding SEO, well, how do we know it's working? These webmaster tools will help us decipher that. So we need to do Bing Webmaster Tool, we need to do Google Search Console, and then we need to do Google Analytics, the last item. So before we go to Analytics, final questions on Search Console. Right, so my handout, we need to set up Search Console on Google and Analytics on Google. Notes, Google Search Console used to check on the health of your site. Search appearance. submit sitemap, etc. There's other sort of like basic things that we do at Search Console. The difference then with analytics check minute detailed data about traffic your site. You're going to be able to see here what's the most popular web browser people are using to visit your site. What 
city, what top 10 cities are people visiting from? How long has someone stayed on the home page? What's the path that people take as they visit your site? All of this data. And we'll see why that data matters next week. But this is the big reason why you need both of these. One is to check the, the status and the health of your site to see other broken links and all of that. Search Console. And the other is to see, well, let me look at my data. Who's coming to my site? How long? Why? All of that. As I said, I wish they would have merged those two together, but I guess Google feels they should be separate so that you can deal with the data individually. But when we get to analytics, we'll see that that's got so much data there to deal with, <coughs> to learn about, that they've kept it separate. And most of the time, you'll probably be spending it on analytics. As I said, for a client, we log into all three of those once a month. At the end of the month, we look at the data. Usually, we're spending a lot of time on Google Analytics. It's a lot of data to look at and to deal with. To set up analytics is similar to the two things we've done. We'll see how it's different right now. So click on google.com slash analytics. A-N-A-L-Y-T-I-C-S, google.com slash analytics. Turn insights into action. So you're going to see all the data about your visitors, and then we'll talk about what do you do with this data next time. At the top right corner, we have sign in, and here's what I said about they've actually now broken it up into more services. We've got Google Analytics 360 Suite, Google Analytics Premium, Adometry, Google Analytics, Tag Manager, and Data Studio. One of my goals, when I've got the time, is to educate myself on all of these brand new things. I haven't really explored what Adometry is and all of that, so even I myself haven't caught up with everything that they've done. But good old Google Analytics is still there. There's a premium version. I haven't checked what's different there, but premium often means perhaps better. And premium also often also means not free. So probably for some amount of payment, you get better analytics. I don't know. But the, the free one works great. Go ahead and click Google Analytics. It'll ask you to log in, perhaps with the same information as Search Console, and if you set this up for the first time, like me, it'll have three options here. It'll have three options here, such as sign up to, to set this up. I'll click sign up. Google Analytics account lets you set up to track multiple websites. Think about it in, in terms of, of me. Uh, me and my company, we do this for several clients. So we can manage the data of all of these different clients in one login. The data doesn't interfere with each other. One client does not see the data of another client. It's all separate. So in my case, what makes sense here is account name and website name. Again, let me tell you this in the example of us, and then we'll see how it applies to you. Account name is basically like a folder to organize the data of a client. So if I have client X, and then I would put their website. I would say, for example, main website. And I would put their website address here, clientx.com. I would set this up, then I would come back here and I would create a new account <coughs> for client Y. It's their main website and their website address, clientY.biz. So this works great for someone like me that I work with many clients. For yourself, it's a little confusing because you probably just have one website to deal with. It's asking you here to create a folder to store the data. Because for client Y, I could be tracking the main website data of the home page as well as the shopping cart. So I can create the shopping cart property, and that's going to be client biz 
uh, slash shop. So I can track different different uh, websites. I can do this also. I can do YouTube. For client Y, they have a YouTube, and I'm tracking the youtube.com slash client Y. See how that makes sense for me. I have a folder for all the websites I'm tracking of that client. For you that you only have one website, you're, you're going to put the name of your website. Here's Bakery. You're going to track the main website data, and you're going to put in your website address. You choose here HTTP or HTTPS. And here it does not matter to put the WW or not. Industry, pick one that makes sense for what your business is. Food and drink. Check your time zone. It should be correct. If not, set it. There's all of these check marks. It's okay to turn them all off. This is that a lot of data is going to be collected on your behalf. Do you want this data to be shared among different systems? If you don't, it's perfectly fine to turn them all off. And get tracking ID. Here's a huge thing to read. Basically says you will not abuse the system, etc. And terms of service. If you want to use Google Analytics, you have to agree to this. If you don't agree to this, you can't use Google Analytics. So click accept. Sorry, can you uh, those things, those boxes that you just checked off? What were those exactly? Well, one of them is saying, for example, um, would you like to share the data that we're collecting with, uh, with tech support? Oh. Would you like to share this data anonymously so we can benchmark with other sites? Mm. So it doesn't hurt to leave it on or off. Um, it doesn't affect your data. Then I need to set this up to verify. Again, what's to stop me from checking my competitor's traffic? This. I have to verify. And in, for me, it's popping up right away. Here's your tracking code. Go check with your GoDaddy or WordPress or Wix or whatever how to set it up. Um, and there's only one way to do this. Notice we don't have three or four options like the other way. This is saying. This is your tracking code. To get all the benefits, copy and paste this code into every web page you want to track. I have a home page. I have an about page. I have a contact page. Basically, this is telling me, put this code into all of your pages. And this has to be done through code. It's not like uploading like some of us did. This has to be done in the code the same way you did the other ones. Now, if you are using a modern way like WordPress and Wix and such, that's based on templates usually. So if you add this code to your main template, it will then automatically add it to your home page, about page, contact page, shop page, etc. If you don't have a system that uses templates, you will have to manually copy and paste this code into every page of your site. There's no button then that says verify really. You have to copy this code, paste it to your site, and within about 48 hours, it'll start working. Before you try to set this up, let me show you this, because it's you might need to get back to the screen later. Let's show this. We have buttons. Home, Reporting, Customization, Admin. If you click on Home, I created an account called Richard's Bakery. I created a main website. And there's the data for the main website. We will see reporting in detail later. This is all our data. We have so much data, we can customize our view. And then we've got the admin screen. Under the admin, we have all of these settings that we could set. We'll talk about them in detail later. But under admin, property, tracking info, tracking code, 
this is where you go back to get that code again in case you need to get the code again. It's pretty hidden in there. We're going to see there's so much to look at in Google Analytics. When you log in, you'll probably be under Home. It's under Admin, the column of Property, Tracking Info, Tracking Code. So again, based on how you need to verify, you need to verify. But what we're going to do is, we're actually going to wrap up the main lecture at this point and have some lab time because this is going to vary again for people. I'm going to take final questions about everything we've talked about today. We'll finish the lecture, have some lab time, and if people need individual help, you can set up your Google Anal Analytics. So any general questions on what we talked about today? Yes? Sorry, I can, I can ask you that. Okay. <coughs> general questions. Okay, we're going to main, end the main lecture at this point. Next week, we're going to see what's all of this that we set up. And we're going to talk about more tactics to get traffic and um, to optimize SEO, SEM. Um, we'll do it again next time on week three.